What's up, guys? Uh, so I actually debated on whether I was actually even going to do one of these or not. Um, I guess <laughs> I, I used to do little things like this back in the day, but I realized not too long after I started doing that that it was kind of pointless and stupid to, to try and make a benchmark achievement moment out of every single little number achieved or whatnot. So I kind of dropped off from it, and I'm going to try and keep this uh, short as to not be you know, like too pretentious to something of greatness or whatnot. But it, it, I, I, w I think it would be a missed opportunity to not say something at this point. Uh, the fact that 10,000 subscribers have been achieved. Why? Uh, well, a couple of reasons. One mainly being that I always told, you know, I've been referred to as a YouTuber a couple of times. And always like, it's like, feel, feel kind of awkward when that happens. It's like, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm not really a YouTuber. But I am, I mean, I've, I've, I, I checked. I didn't, you know, I've quoted a bunch of times saying I've got 500 plus videos. I didn't realize how many I had recently. I went and checked and I was like 650 range or something like that. So I'm like, wow, okay. So I have spent a lot of time uploading content to YouTube. And uh, of course, not all of us greatly re uh, you know, received. And, and even from my standards, uh, a well-received video with 300 plus views. I mean, you know, so that's why, again, you know, kind of sometimes I feel really weird about, you know, being called a YouTuber because it's not my main source of income. Um, and my viewership isn't really that great. Now, total views for the channel is a million and a half. So that's decent. And, uh, and that, of course, I have some videos with like 40,000 or what. And, you know, I have a, a, you know, a little cluster of popular videos that have, uh, you know, moderate views, moderate viewership or whatnot. But overall, the majority, I think that, um, as a steady following, it's not really, uh, that big. I would, I would you know, I say, um, yeah, so, hmm. But anyway, again, 10,000 is a big, important moment for me because I was like, well, the time you ever get to 10,000 views, and you know, that'd be great. And of course, 10,000 views is still minuscule. And of course, I still have an idea and an understanding of what I need to do to really make the channel take off. And I'm still not ready for that point. And it's, it's a weird thing. And I know, but that, I guess, kind of will tap into some other things I wanted to talk about in this video real quick. Um, but... Being what it is, the 10,000 was the benchmark goal to be to feel legitimate about what I'm actually doing here, and uh, also to consider that 10,000 view, uh, 10,000 subscribers, um, is still pretty impressive for the fact that the entirety of this channel is filmed on an iPhone, <laughs> various iPhones and some cheap Galaxy throughout the time, but for the most part, this this channel exists off of an iPhone on a on a tripod that's falling apart, with just my fat ass sitting in front of a fucking phone talking about cars. So it's a car channel that exists on largely not involving cars. <laughs> it's just ideas and concepts and stuff like, you know, like uh, looking at the, the Z6 crankshaft and the base model talk video, which the base model video wasn't even uh, a, uh, as, as a statement of fact. It was posing a question. And, um, Mr. Arrow, uh, I think maybe you got me confused on what I was talking about specifically in that video when you DM me on on the emails there, which please God, guys, don't do that because the website's email had like five people in it over the course of however many months this existed. I don't have enough content flow through there for me to be checking out on a regular. Um, so anyway, yeah, back to it. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, at 300 some views in, in a day, which is pretty high for a recent upload, and uh and 457 <laughs> for a week ago uh and it's just me talking for the most part guys and i know there's a lot of people who've hated you know back especially when i was really tiny like oh stop this vlog style fucking bullshit it's never gonna go anywhere well it is going somewhere and i think part of the reason why i was saying like you know i wasn't gonna say anything at all is because the channel is at a point where as long as i make uploads at least once a month or two you know a cluster here and there the channel's gonna continue to grow i, I think that uh, there are some things every once in a while that need to be updated, but for the most part, this content is uh, still relevant, and I think it's going to be relevant for some time to come. Unless we get a huge generational shift with the engine systems or whatnot, even then, I think that uh, for the next 20 or so years, 15 easy, uh, that this is going to be relevant shit to talk about. I mean, when you go back to when most people's sources of information is the forums that are from back in 2004 when K-Series was first introduced... <laughs> I think that the shit I'm talking about now is gonna, is gonna have some sticking power for a while. Um, yeah, so it's a big thing, and uh, so it just goes to show that if you have uh, if you have something relatively decent to talk about, uh, you can make something worthwhile on YouTube. You just have to you know stick with it, 
you know, find something you want to do and, uh, and stick with it. You know, I think a, a large bonus for people is, um, that for making content is if, if you actually have cars that you're constantly doing and there's something done to them, that's going to help have some sticking power and it's going to get a lot of viewership initially. You just got to be able to keep it up. Um, because I've had so many uploads at this point, you know, it's, you know, fucking, I think, like I said, it's going to be self-sustaining without too much effort. And, you know, I've had also a lot of people try to criticize me like, oh, well, the fact that you've got, you know, that many videos and that low subscribers means that you're not really successful. I'm sorry, but 10,000 subscribers off of me doing this is, I'd, I'd count it as a success. And it's not even so much as the success for YouTube that has been as important to me. It's also the things that have come from this. Like, there's a lot of things that have changed in my life the last, uh, <clears throat> better part of a half decade now that would never have happened had I not set up a fucking camera and started talking to it. Um, me meaning, you know, the superheroes of the industry, you know, and being on a, you know, a name basis with these people and them know who the fuck I am, uh, says something. Uh, also even with other people on the YouTube platform, like there's other YouTubers, you know, like Christian's a big guy, you know, Christian's influential and like, you know, my life intersects with his and then the life, what, then the people that he intersects with, you know, it's, it's building a network and networks are super important to me. Like the people that you know that you can reach out to is great. You never know for whatever thing, you know, whenever we need to be able to help, which is why I'm always so willing to help people whenever I can. If I can, if I can help and it's not going to be detrimental to me in any way, then why not do so if I can? And, um, even the other day, like, uh, given where this channel was in 2016 compared to where it is where now, um, Kyle from Booster Boys, the other day I, I posted, uh, you know, the channel hit 10,000 and I got a like from him. And that's pretty cool. Cause especially, like I said, considering what, how our initial first contact was and how much of a big learning step that that was for me. Uh, the now that, you know, I would argue the biggest Honda platform on the, um, on the, in the world right now that regularly hits trending. I don't know anybody else in the Honda community that hits trending on YouTube. Uh, you know, that I, I know the dude and actually, He's in Florida and not to give you guys any kind of hope for any kind of cross content or anything there. Uh, the guy, we're not, I'm not alluding to the fact that we're some kind of close friends. You know, I, I, I hung out with the dude. Uh, he's cool. And, um, maybe that could be something later on in the future. And that kind of goes to lead to more motivation to do some shit. Because when we talked that night, I said, I, you know, we both kind of acknowledged the fact that the one thing is holding me back from being bigger is the fact that I don't race. I don't, I don't go out there and do that shit. And, um, and, uh, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that I'm just not going to have a race car anytime soon. That I, I'm, tr that's why I'm always desperately trying to find people who are actively building cars, somebody who's reliably building cars and trying to work on sponsorships. That way, even if I don't race directly, uh, I can have my stuff out there and have it put in that work. Um, I do have somebody in mind for that. If you're watching this dude, you know, K Series Kyle, Instagram, uh, the guy I sold the rocker arms and, and cam and shit conversion to for his VTEC killer, the guy who made the 210. Um, we talked to him the other night. I have three K series blocks that I'm not doing anything with. You know, I offered to volunteer to have him get one. So he can be, he's building another car and he's talking about maybe getting into another car. And he says it's not ready anytime soon. It might be like six months or whatnot. Anybody who builds a car in six months or less time for me is lightning fast. So, you know, if I have more local people who can get a car running fast, like the two guys I built engines for recently, I would love to do that. Um, I'm still waiting for dyno numbers for them, but the cars are up and running. So that's a good thing. But I'm also, you know, a little biased. I like, I want my K-Series shit to sell. So I'm looking for guys that can do K-Series swaps and, and use that because there's a lot of K-Series budget options that, you know, that are cheaper overall than, you know, some of these turbo builds that'll make really good power, you know, and I'm just waiting for numbers to come back to help push the sales there. And um, I, I guess, in a, you know, one of these things come up recently uh my my year in review 2020 is going to be pretty fucking is going to be pretty big because a lot of big shit has happened this year uh i i wanted i expected 2020 to be a big year for me it wasn't in the way i expected but it was in so many other ways that i never would have imagined possible um and one of the things recently is like i got my i don't know if i mentioned i probably didn't mention it here because of why I, I talked about it on facebook so if you're a personal friend of mine you may see me talking shit about the fact that I need a raise, right? So the end of last year, I was thinking about re-enlistment. I couldn't re-enlist for, you know, personal reasons. Um, and then uh, I was freaking out because, you know, I got two kids and a wife that I need to take care of and a household and all these bills and shit. So I was um, I was uh, jobless for a month in the in the process of looking for another job. And, um, and I was freaking out because the, I'm not an overachiever when it comes to, like, I don't sell myself really hard. Like, look, this is what I've done before in the past. This is what I feel comfortable doing. 
This is what I've been doing recently. I could probably do the shit I did before in the past, but I need like, you know, I need time to practice to get back into it. So a lot of times when you're telling, you know, people that are hiring for certain things, they don't feel really confident in your level of doing that if you're not saying, if you're not super showing you're super confident, confident in it. But I don't want to oversell myself in something and disappoint somebody after being hired that leads to resentment. So um, I, I kind of fucked myself going into this new job I had uh, last year because I was like, I did, I kind of undersold myself. And then when I got in there within the first week, I realized, holy shit, you know, I'm like the fucking, I'm the guy in here. And again, not to sound arrogant, it's just there's only one other mechanic in that shop that's on my level, but he's not willing to do the shit that I'm doing because he's old and decrepit. He's been doing this shit for like 30 years. His body hurts. Every time he comes across a major repair, he's like, uh, let's send it to the dealership. I'm not like that. I'm young, still willing to do things. So I'm knocking out shit that nobody else in the shop is touching. And, um, and, uh, so, you know, I was like, Hey, look, you know, then I found out there was a guy who was kind of sandbagging, who was being a piece of shit, who was making $2 more on the hour than me. I'm like, well, that 100% justifies I need the raise that I want. And I know that the, the raise I'm asking for, it wouldn't even make me the top paid guy. I would be like, st I would be like number four on the list. So I think I deserve that. I know if I go somewhere else, I, I can get that. And then that was acknowledged. And it was super acknowledged when my boss went to bat for me, like I switched to night shifts and he was like, if you stay on night shift, you know, I, get, I can get you a dollar. You know, and I talked with my wife and we, you know, we came to a decision that it was, it was better for me to go back to nights, not because of the dollar raise, but because of overall, like, you know, the thing with the homeschooling with the kids, you know, potentially only having one car, all, there was a bunch of reasons. The dollar was at least of my reasons. I decided to go. I thought I was going to get fucked out of the dollar because they told me that was only something for new hires. But my boss, after we had a big discussion about me getting the raise and the timetable about when I was going to get the raise. So I was expecting it to be my March of next year. He gets it for me now. Now, it's not 100% where I wanted to be at, but it's fucking close. I got a $2.50 raise. I'm making, you know, making $27 an hour now. And uh, I wanted 28 And uh, so next next March is the annual raises for the company. I can expect another 50 cents, apparently. So I'm right around where I want to be. I'm not going to be asking for anything more than that because I think it's fair for what I'm doing. And the company I work in is great. There's a lot of good perks to be in there, which is what people are trying to tell me. The perks over the money, I'm like, yeah, but at the end of the day, a business business is business. As much as I like working here for certain things, money is money and I need money, right? So uh, and the reason me talking about this is the fact that I've had, a, you know, like when I posted it, you know, pat myself on the back and enjoy that because I said I was going to get the fucking raise and I did. Uh, you know, I had one of my friends made a comment like he just throughout the time I've known you, you, you're the one that I've known that's consistently, consistently getting promotions and shit like that. Yeah. And why, why is this? Why is it that uh, Chris gets that? Right. And I've had a lot of people make comments on that, that, that know me personally, which isn't too much, but like close, super close friends, which is a very few amount and uh family to talk about like, you know, how the fuck do you do that? I'm like, well, because I'm never satisfied, you know, with, with what I've achieved and I always want more. And I, I, so I set myself little steps. You know, life is like, a, uh, you know, like uphill up a mountain, but if you make yourself steps and every once in a while you stop and chill for a second on and take a break and you start climbing again, you, you know, you're gonna, if, if you're making minimum wage and you bump yourself up to like $15 an hour and that's the most money you've ever made, you're like, oh my God, this is it. I made it. <clears throat> and you're, you're comfortable with whatever life you're living and you settle for that. And then that's great, you know, but, and I know a lot of people who make around the 10, $11 an hour, you know, prime money income thing in there and they're fine like that you know and they're not really you know would they like to make more money yeah but they're not doing anything to make themselves make more money right that's not the case with me um youtube was a thing that i tackled and i mainly did that because i wanted to help people there wasn't you know I, it was two twofold thing i wanted to help people get information because i was always answering questions and i didn't want to answer the same questions all the time like i had been and the other thing is um, i wanted to showcase my engine work that i do you know and i still think that despite the fact that it's not at that level yet for showcasing the engine work you know i do have shit coming this year a lot of engines went out i've already got results back for two of them we're running results for two of them we're waiting for some more um I would imagine the next year I'll start seeing, you know, a lot of dyno numbers, a lot of results. So, you know, push in there and, uh, and then do, even with the engine building, like I, I was selling engines for a while and I had to cut back because I wasn't satisfied with the money I was making. So I had to cut myself off from the, the, my local market and I had to just, you know, sit on the shit I had for, for years, literally think, cause I was like, this, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to sell myself short. So if I don't get the business I want, then I'm just not going to do business. And that eventually paid off this year with me being able to sell at the level that I want to. Um, and then, uh, and the same thing with uh, my salary and pay uh, last year, I was desperate. I was looking, I was guy, as I was leaving Ryder, I was making 23 50 an hour. 
and uh, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to find the same pay. Now, fast forward, not even one full year later, I'm making 27 with the promise of more money coming. So um, I, what happened was, you know, once, I, once I, you know, I, you, I don't have a choice. I can't just sit back and wallow in misery. I had to immediately get back on the horse and start looking for jobs. You know, um, I got the job. Uh, I found out that I got lucky, extremely lucky with a company that has competent supervisors uh, and, a, and a conducive environment for you to be able to stretch yourself out. Like it's not super pushy and uh, you're able to <clears throat> do more. So uh, this is the perfect place for me to spread my wings and like fly like a motherfucker. So I immediately got to it and killed. And within the first two weeks, I had, the, you know, my boss telling me like, we wish I, had, I wish I had three more of you. And like this place would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so you just gotta, you know, so if you want to be successful on anything in life, you just got to not be satisfied and, and you got to focus on what you know you're good at. So you got to find your skill or whatever the fucking department that is and then push like a motherfucker to always expand on that. And, uh, and don't let yourself get distracted by people telling, telling you you're no good or you can't let, you know, let the achievements grow and build for themselves. And, um, also definitely know what you're worth uh know what you're worth be aware of how much people are making in the industry uh, for what the level of work that you're doing and um and then make your case for why you deserve that and if you're in a place where they're telling you they just can't do it for whatever reason then you got to make a timeline for yourself to move on to a, to a new opportunity just of course be smart about it you know try to try to do it in any kind of anger or whatnot but um yeah, just keep pushing on, and that, and that's that's the I guess the overall theme for this uh, for this thing with the ten thousand is that uh, nothing that's really good comes without a lot of work. Uh, things take time. Uh, try not to take too much time. Like try to make yourself a timetable that's reasonable. Uh, same thing for this raise, this company. I was like, look, I got a year. Um, uh, a year for me at at thirty three years old. A year isn't the same as it used to be when I was fucking fifteen. A year ain't shit. But at the same time, too, you know, even as an adult, anything longer than a year is unreasonable. And especially when people are making you promises. So give yourself a reasonable timetable for any any goal that you want to achieve. And if you haven't met that time, then if it's then you maybe need to do something to help push towards that. And eventually you'll get wherever you're wanting to go. And uh, and there's been a lot of times, guys, where I've, I've talked to like people have asked me things and, you know, and, uh, and I've. I recommend YouTube. So I guess that uh, I also push the whole make a YouTube channel thing like Joe Rogan says for podcasts. Like, hey, make a podcast, make a podcast. If you got an idea or something that if you feel like if you've presented something that nobody else has covered, uh, make a video. The only thing I can say on that, though, is you got You do have to capitalize, especially if you're really, really small. The only thing that's going to get you seen is to constantly put out stuff. So that's why, you know, it's, I mean, part of the reason why you don't see me uploading like crazy all the time. Like if I have the ideas, I'll throw content out. But if I don't have it, I'm not like searching for something to do because I've got 600 fucking 50 plus videos. And uh, I already know that I need a car for the channel to get out there to really to really start pushing boundaries and i also know at this point that uh like there's a lot of big companies that could offer more for sponsorship work would be willing if i also had a car out there that i could show like this is what i'm doing and we're out here racing getting results and whatnot so um i do have plans for that uh credit is looking is decent like my credit right now is good enough to buy a house uh it's just not good enough to buy a house with good interest rates uh the gi bill is uh not the gi bill but the via home loan is there for me um, so going into 2021, uh, I'm going to make some inquiries, talk to some people, my dad, I guess for one of them, cause he's smart on the house market thing and, uh, see about doing that. If I can, if I can buy a house with a garage or a yard that I can modify that I can work on cars in, then we can definitely see progress on me building a race car. But again, like I've said a million times, as long as I have to go out in my front yard to work on a car, it's just not happening. It's not, it's not comfortable. And, you know, the humid heat in, in Miami or South Florida is just disgusting. But uh, we will get there. So VHB Engines is not going to just this be this one thing. I mean, it's going to be like this because it's the most comfortable way for me to do things. Hopefully, when I get the house, then we'll see about making some progress. I've got plenty of engines. I could definitely get more cars. There's an EK for sale for 150 bucks the other day. I could easily get that and turn it into a race car. I just um, to the idea of getting it and parking it out front and trying to do engine swap in the grass just ain't happening. But uh, thanks, guys, for everybody this um, this road, this mission with me, man. And uh, thanks, everybody, who's made it to the end of this fucking video. This wound up being a lot longer than I expected it to be. All right, guys. And, um, and of course, I'm not going anywhere. Expect good things to happen in the future. And hopefully, uh, continue to grow together. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And...
Peace.